Hi there, it's Terry Patty here. I have had um, several people ask me how I do my envelopes for Happy Mail. Um, I run a Happy Mail group on Facebook and it's for artists to um, share some of their stash, mixed media artists, um, to share some of their stash with fellow mixed media artists. So we have lots of fun. Um, and in mixed media, there are lots of layers and there are lots of papers um, that get used in those layers. So um, while these aren't, they're really not like that, they're not layered like that, um, but I like to make my envelopes beautiful and I like to do them so that people can tear them up and use them in their own art. Um, so that's why I go to all the trouble to do the envelopes like this, plus it gives me um, art time. Otherwise, I rarely get any. Um, so these will be put together um, as envelopes. They're just cardstock right now. Um, and these flaps will be added this will be added to the back side and then it will flip over um, like that and glued down. So the flaps are more mixed media style. Um, I start with some scrapbook papers and maps and text. There's some sort of um, Asian um, characters there. Uh, some of these have French. Um, so I like to just use, I get old books from Goodwill and um, tear up the pages and use them in all sorts of uh, mixed media artwork, but I like to use them on these. So that will be another video. So, um, so right now I'm just going to show you how to get to this, this part. So um, these aren't painted in yet. So um, the background is done with jelly, a jelly plate, um, creating jelly prints. I did these yesterday. So they're just fun. Okay, turn this one upside down because it's almost empty. Um, when you're jelly printing, well, there are lots of, there are lots of little tricks and, and things. Um, it's, it's always kind of a surprise how things work out for me. Um, but one thing is you want a piece of scrap paper. Um, I usually use printer paper, but I have a piece of cardstock here. Um, and after your brayer gets all pinky, uh, you're going to give it a roll on your um, scrap piece. You don't want it perfect. You don't want it all blended or otherwise you lose, you know, your separate colors. Must have something funky on there. And then I just roll it and you get that. After a while you might get some really beautiful colors um, overlapped here and you can cut out circles, cut out flowers, you can stamp it with flowers and then cut them out, fussy cut them so they're cut you know right up to the edge of the design. Um, so there's there's lots of things you can do with that too so um, don't just go tossing things out um, so there are two ways you can do this. Um, you can do it this way, and then you will have to add some paint and then overlap. And that is what gives you these parts that um, are overlapped. Or this one was done more solidly. So I did it this direction, and so I'm gonna do that again.
Okay, nothing, you know, this part's not real spectacular. Um, don't be disappointed. Now sometimes you can get a really cool um, print if you just put down paper and do that, but, but I'm not going to um, do that right now. Um, Okay, so now comes some, um, actually, I'm going to do um, one more of those, which will be the back side of my envelope. Darn it. This is almost gone. Um, it's Martha Stewart's Granny Smith. I don't like this about Martha Stewart. Um, her paints, this little teeny opening, if you squirt out a glob and you're trying to get it back in there, it's, it's a hassle. So Martha, if you're watching, those should be bigger, like she cares. But, um, little circles are kind of cool. Generally, you don't want uh, kind of blobs sitting there, but um, I kind of like that look. Doesn't have to be centered. Don't worry about it. It's a, a very sort of organic kind of art. Okay. Now I'm going to choose a color that would look nice um, around the edges of both of these and I think that is going to be this. Um, well it could be lots of colors but I have this right here. It's Vivid Violet, something that I use a lot of and I'm just doing a solid I just want to pretty much cover my jelly plate. If you keep going over um, your jelly plate with your brayer, you will start lifting paint. So you don't want to, you know, keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay, so all I'm doing is I want to cover these, these edges. Um, in the end, the very edges are going to be sealed. Remember, this is making an envelope and it's just one, you know, piece of paper. And so we're going to hook these two together um, with washi tape and they'll be sewn and you'll see. So anyway, we just want to cover these edges. So I just put it, you know, about as far as I think it needs to be. There we go. It doesn't matter. If it's perfect, I'm going to get a little bit more. There we go. I just wanted a little light coloring. I like seeing through that. And I like all that sort of grunginess right there. I'm going to cover a little bit of this just because I don't like the straight edge. If that was a little bit more of an organic edge, um, I know I keep using that word, but um, I don't know what fits. Darn it. Okay.
Okay, that's good. So then the next thing is you think of a color that would be nice um, sort of overlaid on this and we're going to do some stenciling. Um, so I think, I think for this side, I'm going to use this, the color that I used for the other part. Might be a little bit too much. But with this part of the stenciling, that's actually okay. Yeah, if you're laying down this much when you do your brayer after you've done it, then you really have too much paint for what I'm doing. Now, you can use smaller stencils, and then you have to overlap. In fact, I think I'll do that because I want to show you something. So if you put it sort of towards one end, um, the paper is thick and there aren't really big um, holes, you know, the cutout part of my stencil. And so it's, it's gonna take a little bit of pressure to get it down in those holes. If this was tissue paper or something, it would just fall right in there. But um, because it's thick, it's harder to get it in there. Or if the holes were bigger, that would be easier. Okay, there you go. Do not worry about parts that are missed. I mean, that is the beauty of this kind of art. And it just adds more um, flavor, more interest. Okay, so here's a cool thing. When you lift this off, you can either set this on something and you can get a print out of it, um, or not. So now I'm going to fill in this area with the part that I just pulled off. Um, but I don't want to go over this whole thing. So I'm just going to go about up, up to that area. And I want my wave things, you know, the design and the stencil. I want them to be going the same direction. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So there you go. Um, there was a lot of paint here that that is a little bit um, too too dark um, just a little bit too much but I love how you can see through the bright color and we're nowhere near done so um, don't give up hope if it kind of looks funky Okay, so I don't want to use this color on my other part because it already has a lot of that color and you won't even see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a lighter color just over this and when your paint dries a little bit on your um, jelly plate, don't worry about it because in fact it you can get a really cool effect um, from sort of reconstituting it with more paint. Um, and this is why it's really hard to stop jelly printing once you're a start. Um, because there's always a little bit of paint, and then you want to add a little more paint, and then you take up another print, and then you have to add to it. And, oh my goodness, the first time I took this thing out of its package right after I bought it, I spent four hours playing. I just could not stop. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. I love that. Okay, so that will be the beginning to another one. 
Um, okay, so I want something light or bright. Um, we'll do this uh, pink, this lighter pink. This is a little bit thicker. These are just cheap craft paints. Um, you'll find some are thicker than others. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. Um, play around. Need a little bit more than that. I'm going to use this stencil this time. It doesn't matter how you lay it on there. And this one has wider openings, or you know, bigger openings, so it will be easier. I really, I usually like the print. I actually should have done this on something else because, ow. I usually like uh, the print with this circular one after I lift it off the jelly plate, but that's fine. And these will look really pretty together. Okay, I'm going to take this off and hmm. So the trick is to have a bunch um, ready that just have backgrounds on them. This is one I did yesterday. I'm just going to... I want to show you the difference between when you um, are taking the print from the top of the stencil um, and after you remove the stencil and what's left. Oh, I like that. So see all these circles you're getting, the complete circles, those were taken after. And you can see there's still some on there. Um, I'm going to add just a light. color I love those colors together hopefully that was enough sometimes when you have uh, dry paint on the plate already, it takes a little bit more wet paint to reconstitute it and to to get it to react and lift. So I may not have had enough paint on there, but we will see. Oh, nice! And see, it's cleaning. It's the best way to clean your jelly plate. Don't wash it. Just leave it. I love that. Wow, and these two in an envelope would look lovely. Okay, we are done with our jelly plate for right now. Now comes some really fun stuff. So these, um, there are more in this collection, but it's hidden under my stuff. Um, so these are Diane Reevely set um, of these clean stamps and I use these all the time. These I like to use on the edge because they're they're fairly small maybe a, probably half inch wide and so I like to use them on the edge maybe one edge of an ATC um, artist trading card or you know something small. You could use them on this but like I said 
we're going to be adding washi tape and so if that was right up against the edge or even a little bit out um, a lot of it would get covered depending on how wide your washi tape is you want it to be wide enough to you know make an impact um, okay so so we're going to do some uh, flourishes actually maybe I'll do those first so I like to do um, the Versafine toffee and it doesn't matter just you know something with some flourishy stuff okay, where'd my two things go This is, yep, yeah, here they are. And my acrylic block doesn't work very well. Um, actually, I don't want it that busy. I'm gonna do this one. So I don't worry about using my acrylic block um, for this kind of thing, because seriously, it just does not matter. So I kind of just come in from the corners. You're just adding interest. Don't think of these things as focal pieces. You're just, you're just adding interest. In mixed media art, this would be considered the third layer. You have your bottom layer, then you have your stencils, and now you're going to do a rubber stamp. And even if you um, did a different rubber stamp that would be a different layer so you don't want these to be linear um, that's something that you have to watch out for um, I really have to watch out for it um, when I'm doing anything with this kind of art because I tend to you know plant my flowers in rows and it it just doesn't work so you want them to be going different directions and you don't want them all the same height. You want them to stick out at varying heights. Okay, there it goes. So next, I really love this part. Um, and I just use this Hero Arts. Um, so this is waterproof and you want a waterproof pad ink pad because we're going to go over this with watered down acrylics so if it's not waterproof then the ink is going to run into your acrylics and darken it up and you won't have this bright beautiful piece again I mean anymore okay so with these again um, I don't like to put two of the same pattern next to each other. I like to space them out and I just realized that I should have started with my my edge so I'll do that in a second. Um, and you want them at different heights to create interest. So I'm gonna put one of those there. I'll put this here. And then we'll scroll over here. Okay, so what I was supposed to do first is this. I do it along my short edges. And I come out, I do the straight side towards the center, so it sort of lines up, it kind of frames in the end. And um, I generally come in a little bit so that my washi tape doesn't cover up too much of it. Now, as I said, this should have been done first, um, but that actually worked out. It actually kind of gets hidden in there. And these are really great because you can line up, line up this sort of little checkered edge with this edge. And you'll be good to go. Remember, go off the edge with your stamps, with your designs. 
don't make everything um, stay on the paper. Okay. So now we're going to do this one. Ah, went a little bit crooked. Okay, so then now you have more of a boundary of where these should be. Um, put one right in the middle. Don't worry about them not showing up well. Remember, you want them different heights. Okay, so three is good, and you want an odd number because it just um, is more balanced. There you go. And now I'm doing the opposite, where I had three of this one before. Now I'm going to do three of this one instead. Okay. Awfully close to the same height. I really don't like that. And I totally blew that. Okay. Those shouldn't be next to each other, but it's okay. Let's see. Okay, now we're going to do some painting with a paintbrush. <laughs> 